So it started. All right, my Nitro gang, I'm back. Time to put this engine back together. I got my glove on. It's not only because I gotta assemble this, and this is gonna be some dirty work, man. I was handling some electric RCs just like this WL Toys I broke the other day. Don't get me wrong, I love this thing. I hit 40 miles an hour on a terrible 3S LiPo. Why do I got this glove on? Yep, I was driving an Arma. You heard me say it, I actually own an Arma. I don't talk about this model a lot on my channel just because Arma pissed me off by not making a single nitro or gas RC. And no, I'm not gonna be getting the new fit scale Creighton. I don't care about that. It's just another truggy. I'd rather get the X-Max before I get that. Actually guys, this is pretty cool armor. I've had this for a couple years now. Got this on Tower Hobbies, it was fairly cheap. This is a brushed model, but I really like the handling of the chassis and the dynamics. If you wanna see a video on this, put it in the comments. Hey, you know what? I'm the gang member leader here. I'm the OG. If I wanna do a video on that armor, I will. All right, let's get back to assembling this engine. Gloves on, let's go. All the components of a nitro engine that came out of this 10 scale touring sedan. I mean, yeah, it's probably a little bit more than what you guys expected, right? When you look at it from the top like this. Time to put this engine back together. I'm gonna start by inserting the sleeve back into its position. Now also you could obviously do the carburetor first, but there's really no particular method that I would say is better than another. I'm gonna start with the sleeve just because that is the hardest part and you wanna get a lot of this out of the way. I'm gonna put some oil all around the engine, you know, on top of the piston. I'm gonna coat it in there pretty good. You guys see that? It's basically swimming in uh, after run oil right now. I'm also gonna put some on the outside here. You want this to go into the engine as smoothly as possible. It only goes back one direction. You cannot possibly mess this up. The sleeve is notched here in the front and you could tell the engine also has a little notch. These two are supposed to be mated together. That is the only way that it's actually gonna fit and be seated properly. This is the tricky part. What I like to do is kind of uh, move around the crankshaft a little bit with my fingers here until I eventually get this sleeve seated correctly. This is probably the trickiest process, but with a good amount of oil, you could usually get it to fit. So see right now what's going on, our piston is not properly centered, but with a little bit of play with the crankshaft here and there, it will eventually find its position and seat itself. Okay, there it goes. Yep, you guys see inside right there? It is seated. Now I can push this all the way down. Now the cylinder sleeve is flush with the top of the crankcase. Everything is good to go here. I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, after on oil, just in case. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna hold it down and cycle the piston a little bit. Yeah, it's on the money, literally. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install the carb back on. Now make sure you're not missing the small rubber O-ring around the bottom of the carb body. Slide this in. Make sure that the carb does not have any openings right here between the crankcase and the carb body itself. You definitely want your O-ring to prevent any air from getting in. This is probably the best area to develop vacuum leaks and the reason why a lot of people can't really seem to tune their engine. Hold it pretty tight with your finger as you wanna get it as tight as possible without uh, stripping anything here. Next, I'm going to be installing the back plate back onto the engine. Make sure that your gasket is here. Mine is not in the best condition, but I don't have any spares. I am going to be reusing it. The worst thing that could happen with something like this is you're just gonna have oil come through the back plate, and eventually your one-way bearing might become destroyed and it might slip when you're trying to use the pull start. For me, we're gonna find out if that's the case or not. Now the starting shaft goes inside the back plate here. Okay, there's a notch in the starting shaft and that has to be aligned with the pin all the way on the bottom here. This is literally what's gonna be engaging the crankshaft when you're gonna be using your pull start. What I like doing is start at bottom dead center. This way I know where this pin is so I can actually align these pieces later on. This is the most annoying part right here actually. Also the gasket itself tends to move when you're doing this of course so not the funnest activity of restoring nitro engines but it's necessary. All right, it is in. 
So everything is made it correctly. If it was not, I would not be able to put this back in one piece. I just put all four in. They are not that tight right now. When you're done and you want to really get it secure, what you want to do is use an X pattern. This distributes the force evenly because you don't want to be squishing or breaking or destroying anything in terms of the gasket itself or any of the metal components inside just in case anything is a little bit crooked. So as I spin the one-way bearing, you guys could clearly see the piston is moving inside the cylinder. I'm not noticing any really weird compression issues, so everything should be okay. At this point, I'm going to be putting on the clutch belt. Now, some of you guys in the prior video said, how come I didn't remove everything and make sure that the front main bearings are clean? Well, I kind of took the shortcut approach. I really did not want to remove these clutch springs here. I didn't want to remove the clutch nut. A lot of times there's a collet here, it's hard to remove. It could be a whole sort of bunch of situations. This way I could minimize a lot of time and probably, you know, risk of breaking something. So parts for these things, not the easiest to get at this point. Tighten the clutch nut here. Very easy mechanism. It just has a couple bearings inside. It spins, you know, on its own. You just want to make sure that the clutch itself spins when you put it back on. And then also before you put it on, make sure your hands are not oily. Don't touch the clutch shoes with oily fingers. This part right here is for one of my viewers. He was angry at the fact that the original sticker was still on this pull start. So here it goes, man. I told you I was going to do it for you. Oh, yeah, look at that. Removing the original protective plastic sticker on the outside of the pull start. That felt great. The pull start is on now. You want to use the same X pattern style of screw fastening as always anytime you have you know, four screws all around the perimeter of uh, an item. That's what you want to do. I'm going to pull the starting cord. Watch this, guys. You see that? Yep, everything is functional. The piston inside is spinning. The pull start is not skipping through. Uh, catch is pretty well. One nearly fully assembled old Thunder Tiger motor right here coming right up. A word of advice, sometimes, you know, I do use thread lock here, but that's only after a run when I check the screws. If something is significantly loose, then that's a good sign that you might need thread lock. I usually do not do this here unless I have that problem. Time to assemble the header back. All I did was just uh, clean it. I scrubbed it with a Brillo pad. In fact, I didn't even remove the stock exhaust gasket that's here because I don't have one. Let's put this back together now. It's just two bolts. These bolts here are probably the worst to remove if you strip them. The reason is there's absolutely no space here to get a Dremel anywhere in here. It is right under, you know, where the cylinder cooling head sits on top. So be careful when you torque these down. Okay, that seems solid enough. Everything is good to go. Look at that. Looks beautiful already. Look at that nice polished header. Now I'm gonna assemble the factory cooling head back on top. Now before I do that, let me just make sure that the glow plug in fact still works. This is the original plug. So we're gonna see if it actually lights up red with my glow starter here. You guys see this? It's pretty red inside there. I would say this is good to go. Now it is really best practice to replace one of these, but I'm gonna reuse this just because I don't have any spare glow plugs right now. Glow plug goes inside the cooling head. I always like to do this first. Let's just verify one last time. Everything is good to go. Next thing you gotta do is install this shim back on. What this does is kind of decrease a little bit of that compression. Sometimes when engines wear, you might wanna remove this shim. This will make sure that the head is seated a little bit closer to the cylinder and piston, and obviously that will increase your compression. Now I'm just going to install the head back on with the factory four screws that we had here. It really doesn't matter which way you put it on, it is symmetrical in every direction. We're going to use the same exact X pattern that we did on every other set of four screws throughout the motor. This is the moment of truth. I'm going to pull the pull start, hopefully nothing is weird and we have a good amount of compression. Oh yeah, it feels good. I can really feel that compression, I can feel that pop in there. If this was really easy to pull, then it's a safe bet that your engine is probably low in compression and needs a rebuild. This one, I can hear that pop, man. It's popping up in here. Here it is. One fully restored, cleaned 
sanitized Thunder Tiger 0.18 Nitro engine. This is what the high is all about. The power plant right over here, yeah. The last step, we finally made it. Just gotta put this entire engine back into the chassis, connect the fuel lines, make sure the gear mesh between the pinion and the spur is good. That's really, really important because if it's not, you're gonna have a lot of binding and uh, you're gonna probably wind up stripping your spur gear. So that is number one, you gotta have the right gear mesh. Once the first screw is in, you pretty much just gotta position it. Getting the first one in there is usually the problem. Okay, yeah, this is good. You want a little bit of a gap between your clutch belt and spur. Everything is back on the chassis. This is the most important part. We're gonna do a final electronics check and make sure that the car is opening normally under full throttle. You guys could see right over here when I give it full throttle, right? Opening up all the way. The brakes are functional. Here it is guys, all fully assembled, ready to go. I got my 25% nitro fuel here that came with my Savage XLK 5.9. Let's hope that there's no vacuum issues. Now, a lot of times when I've rebuilt these carbs, they still had some kind of situation going on. Hopefully this does not give me a problem. Most important thing is that I actually see fuel coming through this fuel tubing. Now, if I don't, that's not gonna be good. That means there's a vacuum leak. I'm gonna hold the exhaust plugged. Let's see what happens. Well, so far, I don't see any fuel going anywhere. I kinda see a couple bubbles here at the outlet forming, but they're not traveling anywhere close to the motor. You guys see that? I'm gonna hold this a little bit like this. The fuel line is a little dark here, so it's hard to tell. Yep. I kind of see a vacuum leak already and for some reason there's a whole bunch of oil and fuel around the top of the gas tank. That's not a good sign. Okay, well you know what? This doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pour some fuel down the carb right now and then hopefully this thing will actually start. Here we go. Light is green, glow plug is good. Oh yeah! So it started. And of course it died. I was hoping that maybe when it started, it would start creating back pressure and fuel would travel up this fuel line, but I still see the fuel exactly where it used to be. I gotta investigate this situation a little bit further now. But it started guys, it started.